Now that you've decided what type of DJ you'd like to be and you've gotten a reliable vehicle, it's now time to decide which type of media you'd like to use. But first, a little bit of a history lesson. In 1877, Thomas Edison created the first phonograph. A phonograph is a machine that enables recording and playback of sound. Recording of sound was possible by someone speaking or singing into a large horn and the vibrations of this would cause a stylus to create grooves in a wax surface. In 1888, the Thomas Edison Company started manufacturing cylinder records. On cylinder records, there's one song per record. The cylinders come in cardboard tubes like this. The title of the song is not uh, listed anywhere on these tubes. But the song is listed on the rim, imprinted onto the rim of the cylinder with the product ID as well. These cylinders are made out of wax and in later versions of the cylinder they started using celluloid. As you can see the cylinders have grooves and there's approximately 100 grooves per inch. In later versions there's about 200 grooves per inch. Now when these cylinders are played on a phonograph, they play at relatively about 120 RPMs. Uh, later versions of the cylinders played at 160 RPMs. Uh, the, songs, the song on here would be approximately two and a half minutes to four minutes long. These cylinders were manufactured, as I said, from 19, or 1888 up to 1929. In 1910, these were also started to be manufactured by the National Phonograph Company and these are called diamond discs. As you can see they're quite thick, they're about a quarter inch thick and they're called diamond discs because they have to be played with diamond styluses. So again there's a song on either side of this disc and in the middle of the disc the, uh, the title is imprinted right onto the disc. This was in 1910 they started manufacturing these. And in the 1920s, they started making the discs with a, a paper label on the middle of the discs. In the 1930s, after cylinder records and diamond discs, came the 78 RPM records. Now these records are much more thinner than diamond discs, but still only have one song per side of the record. After that, came what we know, now know as the LP record. The LP record plays at 33 and a third RPMs. With the advanced technology, manufacturers were now able to put five songs per side of the record. Uh, each song has a space in between it for easy cueing. The disadvantage to using records like this is that once you get quite a lot of these into a case and taking them to a gig, uh, it becomes quite a heavy task. Now these LP records come in a cardboard sleeve like this and inside the cardboard sleeve the LP was contained within a paper sleeve as well. Whenever a company wanted to put out a hit promoting that LP they then came out with a small record like this also in a paper sleeve this is a 45 rpm record as you can see the hole in the middle is quite larger than the lp so what record companies had to do is sell these little adapters and these would snap in to the framing of the middle of the record like that and then with this hole here you can still put it on the spindle of your turntable. Then companies wised up to that and they started making some of the 45s as the entire center being the whole label and again the small hole like the LP for the spindle of the turntable. Then companies started making various colors of vinyl like this Elvis one is yellow and I have a Elvis one here which is a white vinyl. 
Then they just started doing the same thing with LPs. So they started making various colors of LPs as well. This kind of looks attractive uh, on a turntable when you're DJing. It, it kind of sets you apart from other DJs that are just using typical black vinyl records. Um, then record companies also started doing what's called a picture disc for their 45s. So this being a Madonna one, this is a picture disc of hers. And this is a Def Leppard one. These aren't really practical to play. Uh, they are playable, but they're not practical uh, when you're DJing uh, because uh, uh, they're harder to handle. And then companies thought, well, if we could put one single out on a 45 and with the uh, creation of remixes, uh, they started coming out with 12 inch singles. And that's what this is, meaning that 12 inch is the size of the platter. And there's typically one to three songs per side of the record with various, the same song uh, remixed in, in various versions of that song. After that, we got into cassette tapes. Cassette tapes, exactly what the name implies, it's actually an actual tape. The tape is encased in this hard plastic form and it winds around these two reels here. So you can wind this one all the way till this one is empty and this one is full or vice versa. These tapes came in 30, 60, and 90 minute formats. They were blank tapes. Uh, they also uh, came, record companies also produced tapes that were like the LPs, uh, only the, you know, there was actual music on them when you bought them, but there was also blank tapes that you could buy and you could put your own music on them for those 30, 60, 90 minute tapes. Uh, typically with a 90 minute tape, you could fit about 15 songs per side of the tape. Um, the advantage to these are they're much more compact than LPs. The disadvantage is that you, if you want to find a song, then you're going to have to forward fast or rewind all the way through the tape to find the point of the song or the start of the song that you want to start playing uh, as, as your next song. Uh, that becomes quite time consuming uh, while a song is playing and if you run out of time, then you're going to have blank air. The next technology that came out was compact discs. Again, the advantage is that they're slimmer than uh, cassette tapes. They're, they're smaller than LPs. Uh, they've got uh, spaces in between the songs uh, for queuing points. Um, the disadvantage to some that some DJs feel is that they're not as queuable as actual LPs are or as digital music is. So again the, the compact discs um, come in hard cases like this. They normally have a sleeve or a booklet in the front with the artist's information on it and within behind this hard plastic piece here they have the back cover which lists your songs on it. And if you're stacking your CDs upright like this, then they'll have the name and the artist on, on the, the edge of the CD right there. The CD itself, as you can see, it's like a mini record. The artist's uh, information is all engraved onto the, the top of the CD. Now, when this is placed into a CD player, it'll slide, usually slide into a drawer and the laser, when press played on the CD player, will activate from the bottom of the disc and shoot up. And it will read the disc uh, from the inner edge to the outer edge, unlike a record where it goes from the outer to the inner. Um, this, these CDs, as I said, are uh, convenient for um, any type of DJing you're doing. Uh, if you're in a club or mobile work, um, they're compact, they're easy to use. Um, you can get, you, they're still available, unlike cassette tapes aren't available anymore. Um, LPs are still available. And next we'll talk about digital music. 
The last media option you should consider is digital music. Digital music is basically data files on your computer. Data files get onto your computer by downloading music from different websites or with using certain software ripping your CDs and vinyl to your computer. Now the advantages of di digital music obviously is that if you're using just that one format then you don't have to carry turntables and CD players around with you. And the accessibility of music online is much greater than the other two formats right now. The disadvantage is, is that it's not quite as hands-on as using CDs or using vinyl. With CD players or CDs, uh, CDs you can beat match with now, but the accessibility of dance remixes and other types of music might be a little restricted. With vinyl, a lot of club DJs prefer vinyl because they have the ability to scratch and to do beat matching a lot easier with vinyl. They also like the warmth sound of vinyl over CDs. However, with vinyl, it can get scratched or damaged or even broke much easier than obviously the other two formats. So whichever type of DJ you are, you can either use one, two, or all three of these formats.